Guadalcanal Diary with Richard Jaco. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. And greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty years from today, an old man walks down Main Street. All his life, he's been justly proud that he was one of the famous few. And as he walks, his neighbors point him out to the stranger in town. Stranger. That man was at Guadalcanal, they say. And perhaps they add, I wonder what it was really like. Right now, that old man of the future is a youngster with a confidence set to his shoulders and a hint of a swagger in his walk. And rightly so, because he is a United States Marine. A Marine who helped to turn the great retreat in the Pacific into a great attack. A Marine who made American history. But behind the confident shoulders and silent swagger lingers the memory of other Marines who rest forever in the green jungles of Guadalcanal. The war correspondent Richard Tregaskis wrote the story in Guadalcanal Diary just as he saw it happen. From that book, 20th Century Fox made one of the really great motion pictures of the war. And tonight, we bring it to you with the same stars you saw on the screen. Preston Foster, William Bendix, and Lloyd Nolan. We borrowed Bill Bendix from his own radio show, The Life of Riley. Most of us have seen pictures of Guadalcanal in the newspapers and magazines, pictures of the wreckage of war in the midst of choking jungle, and perhaps here and there, a lonely coconut palm still standing above the debris. Strangely enough, that lonely palm tree has a very direct connection with Lux Flake. You see, before the war, there were rather large coconut plantations on the island, and from these and many others scattered over the globe came raw materials that were used in the making of our product. The next time you pour some Lux Flakes into the dishpan, you might remember that a lot of people and places all around the world are helping to wash your dishes. And turning now from dishes to drama, we raise the curtain on the first act of Guadalcanal Diary, starring Lloyd Nolan as Hook, William Bendix as Taxi, and Preston Foster as Father Donnelly, with Richard Jacob as Chicken. in school a dozen or so years ago. They were taught geography from books and maps, and many forgot the lesson. Now they are Marines. Again, they're learning geography, but it is taught with fire and blood and steel, and this time, no one will ever forget. Let's suppose it's February 1942 instead of 44, only two years ago, and suppose someone asks the question, what? is Guadalcanal? The answers would run something like this. Huh? Guadalcanal? Never heard of the place. How about you? Oh, sure, Guadalcanal. That's in South America. They send us bananas. Uh, that man next to you, do you know? Yeah, it's a canal, like in Panama, in a Suez Canal. I think it's in Spain. And you, Mr. DeMille, in February 1942, how would you have answered the question? Well, the, the chances are I'd have run blushing to the nearest encyclopedia. Yes, few people knew much about Guadalcanal. Among those few were these officers in the Marines. Guadalcanal, one of the Solomon Islands lying in the South Pacific. About 6,000 miles from the United States, 3,340 miles from Japan. It's adjacent to several other islands, Savo, Bougainville, Tulagi. Guadalcanal is 90 miles long, 30 miles wide. Mountainous and heavily forested. On it are a few copra or coconut plantations. Guadalcanal recently has assumed tremendous strategic importance following its occupation by Japanese troops who are now using it as a base of supplies and the site of an airfield. This island must be taken from the enemy at any cost and at the earliest possible moment. The earliest possible moment was six months in coming. Then, in August 1942, three transports loaded with Marines plow through the placid waters of the South Pacific. On one of the ships is a chaplain. His name is... Donnelly. William Donnelly. Yes, I'm a chaplain. I'm not a fighter. I carry no weapons. But there's a place for me in this war. I'll find it sooner or later and then do what I can. They'll need help. No one knows where these ships are going. Not even Colonel Grayson. But it's very pleasant in the beautiful white sunshine of the port deck, watching the blue sea slip by. As usual, the favorite occupation of the enlisted men is shooting the breeze, exchanging scuttlebutt. Boy, I'd sure like to be back home right now, sailing me a boat on Chesapeake Bay. If I was home, I wouldn't be on no boat. Ebbets Field, that's for me. 
Watching them beautiful bums. Yeah, bums is right. Just leading the league, Sergeant Malone. Just leading the league. Oh, sure, that league. You got any dough that says the Yanks will take the bums in the series? Look, Taxi, the Dodgers ain't even in the World Series yet. What good is still going to do you where you're going? How do you know where we're going? Oh, pipe down. Besides, I don't care if I never see any more dough again in my life. Of course, you guys understand I'm talking about Confederate dough. Hey. Yeah, chicken. Ain't that guy over there a war correspondent or something? Yeah, that's him. Hey, you. Hi, Elizabeth. How's about putting my name in the paper? The funny paper. <laughs> sure, son. What name is it? Johnny Anderson. You can call him Chicken on account of he just sprouting his pin feathers. Boy, will a certain party I know get a kick out of that. Ah, you and that certain party again. Look, Chicken, you know your mother don't let you go out with dames yet. Yeah, well, listen here, you guys. Me and this certain party... Go on, pipe down, will you? Pipe down. I give the world At night, we're out on deck again. The boy's singing. It's funny in a way. You never hear them singing war songs or that fast jitterbug stuff. Always the old familiar songs, sentimental and corny. Then you remember how young they are. Dear Mom, we are still somewhere on the Pacific Ocean, and I do not know, Mom, when I will see... That baby yours again, chicken? Oh, sure, why not? Some doll, huh? Yeah, she's a real hunk of woman, and she don't give me no arguments either. She don't, huh? You know, I knew a dame like that once. But so did a lot of other guys. But see you later, chicken. I'm going back. Yeah, see you, taxi. Hey, taxi. Yeah? Hot, ain't it? Yeah. I want you guys like a nice tall glass of ice cold beer. Hmm? Beer, strictly a middle class beverage. The last time I was home in Brooklyn, we was having cocktails. My old lady brought them in. I take one taste, and boy, what a kick. Do you know what she did, my old lady? Now what? She took them out and put in another slug of gin. What a sweet old lady. Yeah, well, time to turn in, guys. Yeah. Good night, Hook. Taxi. Okay, boys, come on, come on. Better knock off the skylock and hit the sack. Lights up! Ten minutes! See you below, Sarge. Yeah, as soon as I get these kids to bed. Good night, Hook. Say, uh, you know yet what we're up to? Oh, same old thing, Seuss. Maneuvers. Go on now, turn in. Ah, maneuvers. I'm getting pretty tired of this whole business. Oh, yeah? Well, one of these days we're going to bump up against the real thing. The sooner the better. Good night, Hook. Good night, partner. Another lazy day has ended. As uneventful as all our days had been for more than a week now, the only difference is that we're a few hundred miles closer to whatever we're heading for. At dawn the next morning, we learn the answer. Up on the bridge, I see Colonel Grayson, Captain Cross, and Captain Davis. They're looking through binoculars at something big beyond the mist. The men are on the deck below. And what they see is something they have never seen before. Look at it. Just look at them. Hey, what's going on here, boys? Look, Father, look. There's a thousand of them. Transports, cruisers, destroyers. Yeah, and over there, you see plane carriers? I knew something was up. I knew it. So we're out of maneuvers, huh? No, if we only knew where we were going. Wherever it is, Chicken, it looks like we mean business. Boy, I never seen so many ships before. That is, outside the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Hey, something's heading this way. See, that launch? Yes, with a civilian. Hey, maybe he wants to enlist. Uh, How about me swapping places with him, Hook? Go on, you wouldn't miss this for a year's pay, and you know it. Well, gentlemen, at last I have the news we've been waiting for. We're going to attack the Japanese strongholds on Guadalcanal and Tulagi and the Solomon Islands. Uh, you have a question already, Captain Cross? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> if I may. The question is, when? Well, it may be tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. If we choose, we can fight Guadalcanal within 18 hours. But whether we do or not depends upon the strength of the enemy's defenses. Captain Davis? I was wondering, sir, if this task force is going to remain with us. Uh, I doubt it. The Navy and Coast Guard will lay down a barrage and remain offshore until we've established a beachhead. The carriers will give us what reconnaissance they can. Uh, B Company, that's you, Captain Cross, will take the left half of the beachhead. A Company, Captain Davis, the right. Our chief objective is an airfield, which the enemy has almost completed. Now I know you're all wondering about this gentleman here, whom the Navy just brought aboard. And he's Mr. Weatherby. He supervised the copra plantation on Guadalcanal, and he can give us an idea of what it's like. And Mr. Weatherby, please. Well, gentlemen... After crossing the beach here, you'll have to penetrate a field of grass, as you can see on this map. Well, grass sounds easier than pillboxes. Yes, but it's four to six feet high. Good stuff for the Japs to hide in. I'm not a soldier, Colonel, but my guess is that your toughest problem is crossing the beach and getting your men under cover of the palm trees as quickly as possible. There's a grove of these trees just beyond the grass. Yes, we're going to lose men, but remember this. Don't stop to help the wounded. The corpsmen will take care of them. 
You have to cover the men who will be landing behind you. Is that uh, clear, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Uh, while I'm on the subject, uh, Captain Davis. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, post the following order. Aye, sir. Annex E to General Order Number 3, burial. Graves will be suitably marked. All bodies will wear identification tags. Now, Mr. Weatherby, about... Two hours later, Sergeant Hook Malone has a mimeographed paper in his hand. The ink is still wet. He holds it carefully as he reads it to the men of Company A. The coming action marks the first offensive in a war against the enemy involving ground forces of the United States. The Marines have been selected to initiate this action. And it always the way? Which will prove the forerunner of successive offensive actions that will end in ultimate victory for our cause. Yeah. We are meeting a tough and wily opponent, but he is not sufficiently tough or wily to overcome us because we are Marines. Now you're talking. Each of us has an assigned task. Let each vow to perform it to the utmost of his ability with added effort for good measure. Good luck, and God bless you, Walter E. Grayson, Colonel. Very well done, Hook. Very academic. But when do we do it? Okay, boys. Inspection in ten minutes. On the double! Well, Chick, looks like it won't be long now, eh? Looks that way, taxi. Hey, what time is it back home, anyway? Let me see. Uh, how many hours difference is there? Well, there's 19 between here and San Francisco. Then there's three more between there and home, but I can never tell which way it is. <laughs> me too. I can never tell whether today is yesterday or tomorrow. <laughs> now, take it easy, kid. See you later. Yeah, so long, taxi. Small talk. Scuttlebutt is not a privilege of the enlisted men only. The officers shoot the breeze, too. But Captain Davis and Captain Cross have been doing that for years. What are you looking in the mirror for, Walter? Getting bald? Oh, it sure looks like it. What do you suppose Edith and the kids are doing right now? Sleeping, I hope. How do you feel? Scared? Sure, but I try to look at it as just another job, like like selling a big order when there's a lot of sales resistance. Funny that we should end up like this. First two companies in. Three to one says my outfit lands first. I'll take that. One coconut says you don't. All right, now, wait a minute, you guys. Wait a minute. Quiet down. Let a guy talk, will you? Now, most of you have never had any experience in the jungle before, but the Japs have. Plenty. So let me give you some advice. Keep your mouths shut. Stop yelling your heads off. We can beat them at their own game of silence if we try, but... And you know how Marines are. Some dope will yell, Hey, Mac, is that G Company over there? <laughs> Yo, that ain't funny. Keep out a knife of snipers all the time. See a bunch of bananas and a coconut tree, shoot them down. That makes sense, don't it? You're a very profound guy, Hook. Oh, yeah? Well, I... Hey, wait a minute. What's that you got? Huh? Blackjack? That thing ain't no government issue. No, no that's Flatbush issue. I just made it. If it'll make the Jabs happy to die for the Emperor, I'm going to try to make them happy. So you're going to take the island all by yourself, I suppose? Well, that would cause no surprise in certain circles in Brooklyn. Ha. Huh. And there's one thing more, guys. Now, don't go around picking up any helmets. Or anything else that Japs leave laying around. Yeah, but supposing you promised a certain party a souvenir. You just forget it, chicken. Sure, you're liable to find it's been rigged up with wiring and it'll blow right up in your kids. Oh, oh, hiya, Father. Hello, Hello Father. Boys. Say, uh, Padre, any natives on that island? Mr. Weatherby said several thousand. Are they cannibals? No, I believe they're strict vegetarians, chicken. But then, of course, they've never tasted marine meat. <laughs> well, don't worry. We may land tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's Friday. <laughs> Friday, the 7th of August. It's here. The day of landing. Now on the decks, there is a smell of oil and steel. Every weapon has been cleaned and checked a dozen times. Bolo knives and bayonets. So sharp that they sing when your thumb touches the blade. The talk and the laughter are gone now. Hearts are pounding. Nerves jumping. Here and there, a man wets his lips. Breathes a little harder. Eyes strain. Waiting for a sight of that high, irregular mass lying beyond the sheen of water. Guadalcanal. Canal. Well, there she is. We must have passed the Jap batteries by now, Colonel. Either it's a trick or they're awful dumb. Well, anyhow, Colonel, if it works out, it'll make a swell story for me to write about. Let's not think of it any other way. It's got to work out. Well, the Lord landing like this, Sarge. Looks like this is it, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Well, you better unbuckle your chin straps and your cartridge belts, man. Bring on them Japs, brother. Now, this ain't no turkey shoot, Tex. Make them all count. Don't worry, Sarge. I will. Sorry, we're not going in the same boat, Walter. There's no use putting all of our eggs in one basket. 
funny how we can stand here preparing to force a landing on the Japs and, and act as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Yeah, it is, really. Hey, look. You see the turrets on that cruiser? Yeah. They're getting ready to lay it down. You know, Sarge, times like these kind of make me wish I was back in Brooklyn, driving my cab with the fast meter and keeping an eye on them bums. Now, what are you talking about? When the Yanks get another crack in them, they'll take them apart. Oh, I should live so long. Hey, what am I saying? Here we go. Good luck, man. Same to you. Okay, boys. Over we go. And now, before Mr. DeMille presents Lloyd Nolan, Preston Foster, William Bendix, and Richard Jekyll in Act Two of Guadalcanal Diary, here's our fashion reporter, Libby Collins, to tell us about a style show that has a Treasury Department agent as its star. She's Linwood Elaine Gisclair, the maid of cotton for 1944, and she's selling war bonds in over 40 cities, and in her spare time, modeling her all-cotton luxable wardrobe. The clothes are all ones you can make yourself from easy-to-follow McCall patterns. And all the fabrics are luxable cotton. So you can put what you save on cost and on upkeep into war bonds. An excellent idea, Libby. Won't you tell us more about Miss Miss Claire? Well, she's a tall, dark Louisiana co-ed. And she was selected made of cotton from contestants representing all the southern cotton-growing states. She's touring the country showing women how practical and pretty an all-cotton wardrobe can be. So watch your local newspapers to see when she'll be in your town. Is everything she wears made of cotton? Mm Mm-hmm. Dresses, stockings, undies, even shoes. There are slacks, play clothes, suits, lovely feminine afternoon frocks, evening dresses, too, all made of cotton and all luxable. The fabrics were all tested by the Lux Laboratories and will still be bright and new-looking months later if you always wash them with gentle Lux flakes. Yes, Libby, nice cottons are really fine fabrics. They deserve the same gentle Lux care you give rayons to keep them lovely longer. Harsh soaps, too hot water, and cake soap rubbing can make them look drab and old before their time. Always use lukewarm water and mild Lux flakes. Then you can be sure your pretty cottons will lead a long, long life. Listen while we sum it up for you in both words and music. Cottons lead a long life when they lead a Lux life. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Guadalcanal Diary. Starring William Bendix as Taxi, Lloyd Nolan as Hook, Preston Foster as Father Donnelly, and Richard Jekyll as Chicken. We know the Japs are full of tricks, but we haven't counted on the surprise awaiting us as we land on Guadalcanal. Everything points toward a bloody battle on the beach, but nothing happens. Not a shot, Japanese or American, is fired. The Japs have vanished. Either the Navy and Coast Guard have blown them all to bits, or... Or what? We don't know. Boy, I gotta sit down. I'm all wore out landing against such stubborn resistance. Uh, don't worry, Taxi. We'll hear from him yet. Yes, yeah, me. It's too good to be true. It's a trap. We'll know soon enough. The old man says the Japs are hiding in the hills. We're to stay here and hold this village. Yeah, very wasteful. They didn't even stop to mine the runway. I'd say they're very considerate little sons of heaven. Hey, look. There's somebody in there. Where? In where? Where? In that hut. Look. Look out, guys. I'm going in. Chicken, you cover taxi from here. I'll go around back. Right, Sarge. Watch out, kid. Here I go. All right, you little yellow. <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> Relax, chicken. Have the pigs. Pigs are pigs. Yeah, look at them go. I'm sorry I called you a nasty name, pig. Hey, give me a cigarette, will you? Yeah, here. Say... Since when did you start smoking cigarettes? I'm starting right now. Hey, hey, fellas. Foot says they got a warehouse full of Jap beer and caviar. Yeah, fish eggs. I was eating some. They taste pretty good. Maybe the Jap poisoned them. If nothing happens to you, Butch, let me know. Gangway, gangway. Hey, Pudley, hey, where'd look. you get the bicycle? Don't call me, boys. There are plenty more where this Boy, came that's from. Uh, honey. There must be a couple of hundred Jap trucks over there. Radios, guns, everything. Well, Padre, I guess we really caught them with their commodores down, huh? Well, if you want to be elegant, Taxi, that's one way of putting it. But from the reports we're getting from Tulagi... Get behind that street, guys! On the door! Where's my helmet? Where's my helmet? Hey, taxi. Yeah? This is it, huh? Yeah, maybe. Sergeant Hook! All right. All right, sir. What's going on there? Oh, we can't tell, sir. The shots came from the edge of the jungle. Hey, Sarge. There they are. Three monkeys on a rope. Hey, sir. Looks like Private Steinhouse got three prisoners. Bring them in here. Taxi. Pretty small guys, huh? Yeah. They don't smell so good either. 
Hey, Snow White, where's the rest of the seven dwarfs? That ain't no use, guys. They don't speak English. That's Hart. That's Schaffner. That's Mark. Ah, uh, good work, Steinhouse. Where'd you pick them up? Found them sitting under a bush, sir. Sir, are uh, these the monkeys we're fighting? No, no, these are laborers. They keep pointing off toward the hill, sir. I guess that's where the rest of them went to. Hey, what are they doing, praying? No, they think we're going to shoot them. Uh, Sergeant. All right, sir. Uh, get them something to eat. And then turn them over to the MPs. All right, sir. Get moving, Tojo. Oh, yeah. Need to get your cut now. You got them. I'm a goddamn. We ain't avocado. got no avocados. We don't have to wait long to learn what tropical weather is like. The sky suddenly blackened and we're drenched in a steaming cloud burst. The rain comes down in torrents. And through it plows the steady plop, plop, plop of the sentry's feet. And then it comes. <laughs> Solitary shot, and one of the sentries sighs and crumples silently into the black mud. He is dead. Holman! Holman! Forget it! Too late. Is he... is he dead? Yeah, chicken. He's dead. And the God have mercy on his soul. Annex E to General Order Number 3. Burial. Graves will be suitably marked. All bodies will wear identification tags. We know now that the enemy has not fled. But in the denseness of the jungle, men are lurking Silent, dangerous, watching us. How many are there? Where are they hiding? How grave is our danger? Not one of us can say. All we can do is wait. Wait and watch in the rain. In the distance, we hear the dull rumble of naval guns. Our ships have met the Jap Navy. And we realize that if our people out there lose the battle, we'll be fighting for our lives before morning. Suddenly, most of us know the awful feeling of being pitifully small. Tiny particles of humanity caught up in the gigantic whirlpool of war. At such a moment, without knowing it, we thank God for men like Taxi. Yes, leave it to Taxi to break the tension one way or another. Help! Help! Help with the Jap! A Jap! He's got me! Hey, help! Hang on to him! Take him off hey, me! Oh, for the love of Take him off! Yeah, yeah, hang on to him, Taxi. Uh, Tojo himself. That's the best-looking Jap I ever seen. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarge. I could have sworn I felt his buck teeth. All right. <laughs> Corporal, here. Here's your first Jap prisoner. Uh, so it ain't nothing, nothing but a hook of palm tree. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I guess the rain must have knocked it off the tree and dumped it in my arms. Yeah, huh? you captured it barehanded. The Flatbush Sergeant yours. Well, I couldn't help it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Pipe down, shove off. Go on, shove off. Get some sleep. We feel better in the morning. We dig foxholes, and on the airfield, steamrollers and tractors roar out, setting up defenses against the day when we'd have our own air support, and knowing that until that day arrives, we have but one course to follow on Guadalcanal. Dig in, dig in, and wait. Well, Colonel, anything I can write about for the folks back home? Well, you can tell them that our task force beat off the Japs last night. It cost three of our cruisers to do it, though, and one Australian. The fight was just off saddle. What about our casualties on Tulagi? Uh, pretty heavy. The Japs are holding up in caves, fighting to the last man. Any idea how many we got? Oh, about 400 on Tulagi, 800 on Gavutu. Uh, that's good news, sir. But now that I've got it, how am I going to get it to the States? Well, there's a Navy plane scheduled in here today or tomorrow. Uh, write it up now, see if I can get it aboard for you. I think they'd like to know back home. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Say, how's about lend me that razor when you get through? What do you want a razor for? Oh, I must have lost mine coming ashore. But you ain't got no use for a razor, chicken. I don't know about that. Here, look. Huh? Where? No, not there. Down here. You see, under the chin. Under the chin? Yeah. Kind of kind of run your finger there. Hmm. Well, hard to say, though. Yeah, sure, it ain't sand. Huh? No, nah, I just washed my face, taxi. You did, huh? Yeah, I guess maybe you've got a whisker there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it now with the naked eye. Yeah, that's what I said. You want I should lather you up and take her off, huh? No, I just assume you loan me the razor. The chicken's got feathers. What do you know about <laughs> yeah, That's kind of cute, ain't it? Oh, there's the padre. I got to tell him. Hey, father. Yes, Taxi? Chicken's turning his whiskers loose. Look. Hey, that's right. Congratulations, chicken. Boy, there's a certain party I'd sure like to know that... No, I guess it'd be kind of silly to tell her. Well, I imagine she's assumed as much all along, chicken. Look, I just found something, too. Limes. They're limes, huh? Yes. Hey, Hook. Come on over here. Chicken's got whiskers and the Padre's got lime. Oh, yeah? Now, well, if we only had some gin, nice fizz water, a couple of maraschino cherries, I'd picture Tom Collins. We could drink the chicken's beard. 
Excuse me, Potter. I was just thinking out loud, you know. Well, that's all right, Sergeant. You furnish the other ingredients, and I'll supply the lime. Here we go again. It's a question, man. Condition red. Condition red. Get into the back hole, man. Get into the back hole. Somehow I can't get over how enemy planes, with the obvious intention of dropping a bomb on my head, can look so beautiful. Get down, Padre. You ain't kidding about this bomb. Hey, chicken. He's hit. Who's this? Me? Hey, you. Look at the blood. Hey, guys, I'm wounded. Let me see. Are you okay, chicken? Just a concussion. You had to burrow in so deep, kid. Cushion yourself on your elbows. Yeah. Hey, they're dropping something out of those planes. Parachutes. They're bailing out troops. Those ain't men, Sarge. Look, they're baskets. Yeah, baskets. Surprise, probably, for their men in the jungle. Yeah, most of them are going to land right here, though. Come on, guys, let's take a look. Food and ammunition. Hey, look, a box of candy. They need candy like the Dodgers need a fourth umpire. Now, wait a minute. Look, the papers. They look like messages. Yeah, they're full of good writing. I wonder what it says. We'll, we'll soon find out. Hey, Manuel. Yes, yes, Fiery. We have a Jap letter for you. That's for me, all right. Me speak. Japanese almost good. I speak English. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. It was in this basket, Manuel. Let me see these. Oh, it say here, the enemy before your eyes is collapsing. They mean us. Hey, Sarge. Yeah? Look at me, I'm collapsing. Oh, God, <laughs> shut up. Go on, Manuel. It said, be assured of help from Imperial Heaven. <laughs> By no means run away from your position. The enemy has suffered enormous losses. All transport have been sunk and their choices took annihilated. Yeah, it's funny. I never thought of it. Maybe we're dead and we don't know it. How about that, Padre? Well, if we are, at least it's not Imperial Heaven. <laughs> Sergeant Malone. All right, sir. Find Captain Davis. Ask him to come here. Well, he's got a touch of cat fever, Colonel. I just took him to the sick bay. Captain Cross, then, right away. Yeah, all right, sir. <laughs> Come in, Walter. Colonel? I've just had a report. The natives say there's quite a large bunch of Japs at Matanikau Village. Aye, sir. That's about five miles from here. You'd better take a patrol down there and see what it's all about. It'll be a pleasure, sir. You'd better go by boat. Take a Higgins. Keep offshore far enough so they can't snipe you. And then come in where and when you can. Or oh, you might take Sergeant Malone with you. Aye, sir. Maybe the report is true. Maybe it isn't. Be careful, Walter. Don't take any unnecessary chances. at noon. Captain Cross, Hook, and 24 men. Hours later, toward dawn, Taxi and the boys return to the beach to watch for them. It is almost dark when they see something offshore. I tell you, need a log. It's moving. See? Step aside, gents. I'll show you how I used to win them Cupid dogs at the Coney Island Shooting Gallery. A buck you miss. Wait a minute, Taxi. It's a guy. Look, he's swimming. Yeah, that's right. A jack. Coming this way, too. There'll be a one-man suicide squadron with a load of dynamite going to sneak in as soon as it's dark. If it's a Jap, where'd he come from? Uh, some of these cooks are pretty good swimmers, kid. Maybe come down the coast where Hook and them went. Taxi, it is Hook. Put down that gun. Trying to run out on that bed, huh? You're nuts. Look, Taxi, it is Hook. Hook, Hook! Sarge! Sarge! You might have shot him. Gangway, guys, I'm going in there. You all right, Hook? You all right, kid? Yeah, I... Yeah, give me the... to the colonel. I got to see the colonel. Sure, Sergeant, sure. Come on, guys. Right. Pick him up. Go back there, sir. We got to go back. Yes, we're going back to Matanikau. Yeah. This time we'll go in force. And not just to take a look around, Malone. This time we go for blood. Thank you, sir. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Preston Foster, William Bendix, Lloyd Nolan, and Richard Jaco for Act Three of Guadalcanal Diary. Mr. Kennedy, I have a wonderful new way to shop that saves time and energy. Every time I want to buy something, I buy a war bond instead. 
And then just imagine how I'll spend it after the war. Let's ask a couple of people from the audience what they'd do with it. I'd like something for the house. Like uh, new curtains or an electric mixer. I'm going to buy something pretty for myself. Well, I'm going to buy nylon stockings. Half a dozen pairs right at one clip. (laughs) Ah, yes, that's what many women say. But so far, those post-war nylons are only a dream. So why not let's face the fact? Lots of women didn't like nylons at first, remember? Then after they'd worn them for a while, they raved about them. Probably you didn't like the new rayons much at first. Neither did their makers. But they needed time to work out improvements. Now there really are some lovely ones. And if they're given the right care, they wear as well as silk. Every time you put a pair of those pretty rayon stockings in the wash bowl, remember... That's practically a dollar bill in that wash bowl. So I hope you're using Lux Suds. Because dollar bills don't grow on trees. If you're tempted to be careless and use strong soaps for stockings or rub with cake soap, remember, those stockings cost money. Give them the luxe care they deserve, and they'll repay you in extra wear. Yes, strain tests prove stockings washed with luxe flakes last twice as long as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Nightly luxe care cuts way down on runs. Helps you to get two pair wear from every pair. If your dealer is out of luxe flakes, try again soon. More is on the way. Remember... Lux is worth waiting for. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll investigate the private lives of our stars after the play. But now here's the curtain for the third act of Guadalcanal Diary. Starring Preston Foster, Lloyd Nolan, William Bendix, and Richard Jekyll. We are going back to Mechanical. And this time for blood. Men are going and boys. Going into battle for the first time in their lives. Boys just out of high school. Grocery clerks, truck drivers, insurance salesmen. Filled with the memories of tricks and ambush and slaughter. The memories of dead friends. It'll be another hour before we reach Botanical. We slip through the jungle a few at a time. Look. Yeah? This is it, huh? Well, we're getting closer, chicken. How do you feel about killing people? To kill or be killed, ain't it? Besides, those Japs ain't people. Yeah, but I mean the first time you got one of them. Well, it was kind of rugged, I guess. Then it's just a matter of repetition. Quit thinking about it, you'll go crazy. Yeah, but I wonder what it's going to be like. Hey, chicken. Yeah? You've got plenty of cover here behind these trees. i got an idea those monkeys will be coming this way. You can pick them off from here like fish in a barrel. Look, wh- where are you going? I'm going over to see how taxi's making out with the mortar. I'll be back. Just keep your head down, kid. Hey, look, there's one over there in the clearing. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, it's an officer, too. You see a sword? That's for me, Hooks. That's you fine. nuts, get down. Oh, he's dead, ain't he? And I promised a certain party a souvenir. you got enough to think about without going after souvenirs. Now, you just think... Keep laying it down there, taxi. They'll be running for the woods any minute, Sarge, if there's any of them left to run. Any sign of snipers? No, not yet, there ain't. Texas is watching for them over... He better watch closer than that. You heard, taxi? Would you look at that? Right through my helmet. Look, Hook, it ain't possible. Put it back on, you fool. Get back to that mortar. Big enough to drive me cared through. Hey, Texas. You see what I see? Yeah. Up in the coconut tree. Watch. Who do you think you are, Gary Cooper or Roy Rogers? Well, they're pretty good, too. This will put him out. Look. Look. You see? He's sticking out his greasy kiss. Yeah. Watch. Scratch one, squid-eyed Jack. <laughs> That's okay, Tex. That was for Captain Cross. I got 24 to go. Hey, taxi. Yeah? I'm going back over the ridge. Join up with us there when you're through, huh? What the... Look! Hey, chicken. Where are you? Hurry, look, hurry. Chicken, you crazy kid. I tried to get the sword. I, I thought it, it was dead. Yeah, yeah, I know. Take it easy now. I, I killed him. But he shot me first. Yeah, yeah. But uh, am I going to die? No, you'll be all right. I, I promised a certain party. That... Look, I got to get you out of here. You think you can walk? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Come on now. Up now. That's it. Put your weight on me. Get the sword. Yeah, I'll come back for it later and get it. Thanks, I'll get a couple of japs to put on it, too. Look, what, what time is it? Will you save your breath? I mean, back home. I never figured this was going to happen to me. What, what time is it, Hook? Chicken. We'd better get 
into an ambulance, Doctor. He'll never make it, Father. Is it that bad, Doc? He's lost too much blood, needs plasma, needs it fast. Can't we give it to him here? With all these other men waiting? He's just a kid. They're all just kids. I've watched you often enough. Perhaps I could do it myself. You? Well, why not? You'll die if you don't. Nothing to lose. Coleman! Plasma! Over here, quick! Hook. Yeah, Father? I think he'll be all right. You'd better get back. I'll watch out for him. Yeah, thanks, Father. was over by nightfall, the Battle of Matanakau. In this war of mighty armies of tanks and planes, it has been nothing more than an incidental skirmish. Only a few hundred will ever remember it. The boys who fought there and the families of those we buried. But the enemy has at last been met and we have wiped them out. Those who can walk trudge back, weary and stunned, moving like drunken men or men in a nightmare. Heads and legs bandaged, clothes torn, Unlit cigarettes dangling from their lips. Old before their time. Veterans. We rest at the village. And then, in the morning, as if from heaven itself, comes the one thing that can best snap us out of it. Mail. Mail from that distant, hazy spot, filled of hopes and dreams. Home. Smells delicious. Come here, give me that. All right, here it is. Captain Cross. Captain. Oh, I'll take it, Corporal. Oh, yes, sir. There's two more for him, Captain Davis. Yeah. Come on, take what about me? Aloysius T. Pot. Take it easy, Flatbush. We'll get around to you. McElvoy. McElvoy. Hey, where's McElvoy? That's you. Huh? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, me. Uh, Bassett. Kalinsky. Faber. Tendler. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. Her name's Geraldine. She's three months old. And did you hear that, fellas? I'm a mother. He got up a little soon, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you hear from, taxi? Oh, me? Oh, uh, from the Flatbush Athletic Club. It says here, it says, uh, it says, are you keeping fit these difficult days? <laughs> you owe it to yourself to exercise regularly so that you will keep your body in the pink of condition. You think we've been neglecting our health out here? Yeah, I think I'll join up. <laughs> Come on, Hook, let's go over and see the chicken. I yeah. told Tex I'd bring him his meal. It was weeks before we had reason again to celebrate. Weeks of rain and disease and malnutrition. Weeks of digging graves. Of watching the enemy slip more and more men ashore. Weeks of being a target day and night of their bombers and zeros. Against whom we're lucky to put up six or seven Grumman fighters. We wonder if this will be another baton. And then, they come. Reinforcements at last. Immediately, we start to push inland. And that Jap runs to his hills and his caves, sweeping us down with machine guns. Chained to them sometimes, rather than surrender. One by one, these fanatics must be blasted out. And the job goes to men like Taxi and Hook. They do it with dynamite and grenades, with gasoline, and sheer guts. So them, it's all on that day's work now. And when the job is done... Back to camp they come and rush for the portable radio. All right, pipe down, you guys. Pipe down. I got it. Listen. And now for the world of sport. Shut up. Shut up. Sportsman's Park, St. Louis, was packed with 34,000 wild-eyed fans as the Cards and Yanks tangled in the second game of the current World Series. Come on, you Redbirds. Give us a score. Give us a score. In the eighth inning, with the score tied one to one, the fans got the thrill that they've been waiting for. Yeah, but will you give us the score? The Cards had two men out when Enos Slaughter caught a fast one and slid into second base for a double. That's it, Uh-oh. Enos. I knew you could do it. It's all right, Sammy. Think nothing of it. Then Phil Rizzuto at second let the ball slip away, and Slaughter dashed safely to third. Oh, I was expecting that. And that brought Stan Musial to bat. He worked on him for a 3-2 pitch. And then with the home crowd screaming for a hit, he popped over the plate. Turn it around. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's coming in again. Listen. And so, baseball fans, today's game ended with a final score. And that's the way today's game ended. Thanks for listening, folks. See you tomorrow. Condition red. Condition red. Condition red. The worst one yet. 
They're throwing everything at us but the kitchen stove. That's the stove now. Here, chicken. Take a drag of the cigarette. Oh, no thanks. I don't mind the one with my name on it. It's the one that dressed the home it may concern. I don't like Anybody who says he ain't scared is a fool or a liar. You hear what I hear? What do you mean, Fonze? Those are not all bombs. Some of them are eight inch shells. But they got nothing anywhere near that thing unless. Yeah, unless we got visitors. The Jap Navy. There's a report that a couple of battleships and eight cruisers are off Sabo. They're really paced on us. I don't mind saying I don't like it. Uh, I got things on my mind, too, but I don't know how the Padre will like it. Go right ahead, taxi. Well, I. I don't know about you guys, but. but me, well. Well, I'm telling you, this thing's way over my head. It's going to take somebody bigger than me to handle it. I ain't much of this praying business. My old lady always took care of that. Yeah, my old lady was like that, too. Well, I don't know as I mean that kind of praying. You know, the Lord's Prayer, things like that. I know. I used to pray like that back when I was a kid. You know, Lord, give me this and give me that. Please let the Yankees win, but I've never been in a spot like this before. I don't like to hear you guys talk that way. Me either. You guys are different. I don't believe you're scared. If you were, you wouldn't have gone up under those cliffs, right under their noses, dropping a gasoline and grenade in their case. Stop it, chicken. I'm just a guy. I come out here because somebody had to come. I don't want no medals. I just want to get this thing over with and go back home. I'm just like everybody else, and I'm telling you, I don't like it. Except maybe I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I guess it's up to... to God. I'm not kidding when I say I hope he knows just how I feel. I'm not going to say I'm sorry for everything I've done in my life. Maybe I am and maybe I'm not. The only thing I know is I didn't ask to get in this spot. If we get it, and it sure looks that way now, well, then I I only hope he figures we've done the best we could and let's just go with that. Maybe this is a funny kind of praying to you guys, but... It's what I'm thinking and praying. Amen. Amen. You're sick at your stomach. Your head rings like a giant bell pounded with a giant sledge. It's as if God grabbed the world by the shoulders and shook it and shook it, trying maybe to bring it to its senses. And then it's over. But you're not certain because you still hear it in your head. The earth doesn't leap up at you anymore and the shells have stopped screaming. But the planes are still there. Dozens and dozens of planes. Hook stands up. A funny look on his face. He starts to leave and you grab at him. But he shakes you off and runs outside. Hey, look! Look, those are jets! Those are all planes! They're all planes! Thank God. At last. Morning, Captain Davis. Hello, taxi. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yes, sir. Men, planes, food. Hot food. I almost feel good. Uh, uh, Captain. Yeah? Uh, what's up, sir? I mean, we ain't getting all this for nothing. I figure when we get hot shower, it means it's time for us Marines to push on somewhere else. Your guess is as good as mine, taxi. I'll know later today. Colonel Grayson's called the staff. Gentlemen, there are 10,000 Japs on the Guadalcanal. They have good equipment, and the jungles and rivers are all in their favor. We've done very well at Matanikau, Tanaro, and Bloody Ridge. But we've got to take over this entire island. It means an all-out effort. And I can think of no better date to begin it than tomorrow. November the 10th, the 167th anniversary of the Marine Corps. Dear Mom, I'm fine and hope you and Dad are not worrying. It's funny you writing to me how you went to the blood bank because a few weeks ago they gave me some of that plasma when I got hit a little. Maybe it was your blood. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Everything here is okay. No kidding, and maybe I'll get home soon. Well, oh, Sterling, I bet you never expected to hear from me again, but ha ha, I fooled you. Because when a gentleman like I tells a lady like you something, that's something. It's here at last. The great offensive. The men have written their letters home. For many, their last letters. We start at dawn. Along the shore and through the jungle, there is but one command. Attack 
Attack, attack. It's one gigantic charge across the width and breadth of Guadalcanal. Hook and taxi are loaded down with grenades. They carry them in slings. And you can't help but think of those pictures of old-time farmers sowing grain. They, too, are sowing grain. The lethal grain of sudden death. Hey, ain't that General Vandegrift over there with the colonel? Yeah. Don't he know it's dangerous here? Yeah, why don't you go and tell him? Come on. Yeah. There is Seuss, born in some tiny Mexican village. He came to the United States and he liked us, and we liked him. And now he is behind five feet of bayonet and rifle, fighting for us. Ahead of him, a Jap is fleeing for cover. He has dropped a knife. Hey, Jap, you forgot something. Seuss picks it up, aims and flings the knife with the speed and accuracy of a striking rattlesnake. Oh, uh, he forgot something. <laughs> Funny, eh? Huh? And so he dies. Dies in blood and laughter. And the green jungle of Guadalcanal. Seuss never knew what hit him. Chicken hears the shot. He comes running up. There's another shot. And Chicken sprawls grotesquely beside the body of his comrade. And then, out of nowhere, appear two Japanese. And with their rifle butts, they prod the motionless bodies. Banzai, honor to the emperor. And back to nowhere, they disappear again. But not quickly enough. Chicken is on his feet and his rifle at the shoulder. And two quick shots... Make two dead Japs. That's one you taught me, Sojo. Chicken has remembered a Jap officer and a shining sword for a certain party. And on it goes, an avenging army, yard by yard, mile by mile, drunk with righteous hate and fury, until at length this island is cleansed of its plague. Those few Japs who are still alive dash headlong to the sea, and the waters of the Pacific rise and ring down on infamy a green and foamy curtain. December the 10th, 1942. We are leaving Guadalcanal today. They have told us our job is done. More soldiers are landing now, and from this tiny foothold in the Pacific, in good time, we'll go forward. We're all at the beach. Offshore, we see the ships that brought them here and will carry us away. Okay, you guys, stay put, will you? We'll be going aboard in a few minutes. Hey, taxi, look at me. Whiskers all over. Look at him. Hey, I thought you guys here would be biting in foxholes. This joint looks great. Give it time, bud. The beauty will wear off. Hey, Sarge, what's it like out here? Oh, it's not too bad, soldier. It's pretty rugged. So long, guys. See you in Tokyo. Okay, we'll be there waiting for you. And then Colonel Grayson says he has something to read to us. We stand there looking out to sea. The waters seem misty. And we wonder why we are the ones who are leaving and why so many of us, a mile or so back in the little clearing, are the ones who shall stay on Guadalcanal forever. We know that we shall never forget them. We pray that you at home will never forget them, too. From Admiral W.F. Halsey, commander of the South Pacific Force of the United States Pacific Fleet, Never throughout the long and brilliant history of the Marine Corps have your deeds and sacrifices been surpassed. Your shining courage has surmounted every hardship and conquered a vile and treacherous enemy. By your zeal and accomplishments, you have added a new verse to the Marine hymn, set the pattern for our inevitable victory, and tower as an inspiration for every American on every front. Today, as never before, we, the Navy, are justly proud of you. In deep appreciation for a job superbly done, and knowing that you will win again and again unto victory, we say, God bless you all. Yes, God bless you all. Curtain falls on one of the most stirring real-life dramas of our time. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will return with our stars for a curtain call. Have you ever noticed how music can be used to express a mood, to picture a situation? Take two women, both doing the daily job of washing dishes. Here's how Mrs. Jones feels about it. Oh, 
dear, I wish I were through. And just look at my red dishpan hand. But, Mrs. Smith... Well, they're all done. In plenty of time for our first aid class. Hmm, and my hands look soft and smooth as ever. That doesn't sound like the same job at all. Tell us, Mrs. Smith, how come you're so cheerful? Oh, dishwashing's no chore, not with luck. Such suds, so rich and so kind to my hands. Guess that's why more and more women are changing to Lux Flakes for dishes. Richer suds that wash the dishes fast. Gentler suds that leave hands soft and smooth. A good combination, isn't it? Yes, and it's surprising how thrifty Lux is, too. Goes further and does more dishes. Actually, up to twice as many dishes, Mrs. Smith, as the same weight of other well-known dishwashing soaps. A little goes a long way. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. In the diary of the Lux Radio Theater, Guadalcanal Diary will occupy an honored page. And here are three of the artists responsible. William Bendix, Preston Foster, and Lloyd Nolan. Thank you, C.B. Glad to be back with you. Yeah, me too. How are things going in Brooklyn, Bill? Brooklyn? <laughs> I was only acting. I- I'm really from New York. Huh? <laughs> you're, you're, you're not really a Dodger fan? Please, I used to be a bad boy for the New York Giants. Oh, say, uh, by the way, uh, are they still in the league? I don't kid about that. We are very sensitive. Besides, it makes me remember the great tragedy in my life. The time I had the chance to go south with the Giants for spring training and couldn't make it. Accident, Bill? No, my mother wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> a bad boy. Well, that's very interesting work. Another man that's always amazed me on jobs is Preston Foster. He's done everything from setting up pins in a bowling alley to singing an opera. How many jobs did you have before you got into pictures, Preston? Fifty-six. Well, it's pretty hard to beat in Hollywood. Well, I've just made it, C.B. Guadalcanal Diary was my 57th picture. Yeah, I don't think you'll last, do you? <laughs> What's your next play, C.B.? Well, Lloyd, the author is one of the foremost novelists and playwrights of the 20th century. And next week's play is one of his triumphs. The Letter by Somerset Maugham. And our stars will be... Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, and Vincent Price. Betty Davis' fine performance in the Warner Brothers picture will be long remembered by all who saw it. And next Monday night, she brings us this drama of a few dangerous weeks in the life of a beautiful woman. A performance by Betty Davis is something you just can't miss, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And remember, the Marines are still attacking Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, and Vincent Price in The Letter. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. William Bendix will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Greenwich Village. Preston Foster appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in the Bermuda Mystery. Lloyd Nolan was heard through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Sullivan. And Richard Jekyll is currently making Wing and the Prayer, also at 20th Century Fox. Heard in tonight's play were Herbert Rawlinson as Grayson, Ed Emerson as Davis, John McIntyre as correspondent, and Paul Zaremba, Tom Holland, Eddie Marr, Howard McNear, Ken Hodge, Bob Young, Charles Seal, Charlie Lung, Norman Field, Gary Breckner. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Lord Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, and Vincent Price in The Letters. Attention, Victory Gardeners. Spry offers you Aunt Jenny's Rainbow Victory Garden. Six kinds of choice vegetable seeds. Bar Globe tomatoes, Imperator carrots, famous varieties of Swiss chard, lettuce, beets, radishes.